Hey, what's up guys? We're going to part three of the local storage series. In this video, we're going to be creating a slightly more complex application than we did in the last video. As you can see in this one, we have two different inputs, one for the color name and one for the hexadecimal color code. And we also added some styling to each of the items here. So let me add one just so you can see what this does. I don't know the hex code for CN, so I'm just going to enter whatever. But as you can see, it just added the color onto our container here. And of course, if we click the refresh button, the contents are still there. And even if we open it back up, the contents are still going to be on the screen. If you haven't watched part one and part two of the series, I recommend you watch those first because we are going to be covering the same topics that we covered in those videos. We're actually going to be building on those. So if you didn't watch those, you might be a little bit lost. All right, let's knock this out. We're going to start by creating a container. And let's create a, another container within this one. We're going to give this a name of input box. And let's create a label for our input box. Let's change this to color. And this is going to say color name. Let's create a space, our input box. Let's give this an ID of color. Let's create two more spaces and we're going to create another label. We're going to change that to hex and this is going to say hex code. Let's create another space and another input box. Let's give this an ID of hex. Let's create two more spaces. And now let's create two buttons. So this is going to be the enter button, which is going to add items to our container. So let's call on a function when we click on this button called add. And for the other one, delete button. For this one, we're going to call on a function called del, short for delete. And right outside of the div container, we're going to create another container. Let's create another pair of div tags here. This is where our color boxes are going to go. We're going to give this a class name of color boxes. And that's going to be it for the HTML. All right, let's start by changing the background color. I'm going to go with white smoke. We're also going to change the font family. I'm going to go with Arial. Go ahead and go with different options if you want. You don't have to go with the same ones that I did. Let's change the width of our container to 95%. Let's place it in the center with margin auto. Let's turn this into a flex box. And let's place it in the center with justify content center. For the input box container, let's change the width to 300 pixels. Let's give it a margin auto. And we're also going to give it a padding of 20 pixels. Let's bring it down a little bit from the top with margin top, 10 pixels. Let's give it round edges, five pixels. Let's change the background color to white smoke. And let's also give it a box shadow. I'm going to go with zero, two pixels, four pixels, zero, and black. I'm going to hover this and I'm going to go with, and I'm going to go with 0 For the input box, let's give it a padding of eight pixels. Let's change the border radius to five pixels. And let's give it a width of 95%. And let's also give it a border of one pixel solid. 
light gray. For the button, we're going to change the width to fit content. Let's give it a padding of 8 pixels. We're going to use cursor pointer. Let's give it a border of 1 pixel solid light gray. And also a border radius of 5 pixels. Let's also change the background color to white smoke. And let's give the button a hover effect. So when you hover it, it's going to turn black, but we're going to go with the one of the lowest settings here of 0 0.1. For the color boxes container, let's change the width to 100%. And let's use a margin top of 20 pixels. Let's also turn it into a flex box. And we're going to use justify content center and flex wrap wrap. And of course you can't see these changes because we haven't added anything to our container here. So you're going to see those changes once we add things inside. All right, as far as the color box is concerned, we're going to change the width of it to 280 pixels. And let's also use text align center so the text within the box is centered. All right, and the last thing we're going to add to the H2 element holding the text is going to be a text transform uppercase. So now the text within our boxes is going to be uppercase. All right, that's going to be it for CSS. All right, we're going to start by getting access to the container where our color boxes are going to go. That's going to be this one here, color boxes. Let's get access to it by using get elements by class name. Of course, we gave this a class name of color boxes and it's the only one so let's include a zero there now let's get access to both of the input boxes let's start with the color and we're going to use get element by ID this one has an ID of color all right we can copy this and this is hex All right, now let's create an array that's going to hold all of the information. In this case, we're going to call it colors array. And just like in the last video, we have to check if we're already using local storage. If we are, then we're going to initialize this array with the data from our local storage. Otherwise, we're going to create a new array. We're going to give this a key of items as well. All right, and let's start by creating the function that gets called when we click on the enter button. In the last video, we simply added the user input onto the array. In this case, we can't do that because we have two inputs. So what we're gonna do for this one is create a JSON object, and then we're gonna add the JSON object onto the array. Let's call it color info. And the first key is going to be color name. And of course, the value is going to be coming in from the user. And the other key is going to be hex code. All right, now we can add this JSON object to the colors array with the push function. And now we can add it to local storage. So if you've seen the last video, this 
looks very similar. Only difference is that we're adding a JSON object to the colors array as opposed to the user input. And we also want to create a function that's going to display the items on the screen. We're going to call it div maker and we're going to create that in a moment. Unlike part two where we simply pass the user input, in this case we have to pass the array because we have two values that we want to pass. We have to indicate which index we want to pass. We want to pass the very last index because that one holds the latest information. All right, let's clear the input fields. Now let's create this div maker function. And of course, when we first run the project, we want to check if we already have something in local storage. If we do, we want to display it on the screen. So we're going to have to take care of that as well. We're going to use the for each function just like we did in part two. In this case, we're going to pass it the div maker function. All right, let's create a div element. Let's give it a class name. We're going to call it box. Remember, this box class is the one that we were adding features to in our CSS here. The only style that we can add to it is which background color it's going to be. That's because we're creating it dynamically, so we have to decide which color that box is going to be here. So let's change the background color. We're going to set it equal to color name. And remember, this colors array is holding objects. So if we want to access the data within the object, all we need is the key. In this case, we want the color. So we just use color name here. All right, now let's add some HTML to this div. So in here, we're going to include the color name key. So that's going to return which color name the user inputted. Let's copy this. And we're going to paste it here. Let's change this to hex code. And now we're going to add this div onto our color boxes container. We're going to do this by using a pen child and include div in there. All right, let's try this out. Let's add any color in here. I don't know the hex code for orange, so let's just type in whatever. And there's our first box. All right, now let's create the function that gets called when we click on the delete button. So we're going to use local storage clear to clear the local storage. Let's also reset our colors array to null. And let's set the inner HTML of our color boxes to an empty string. That's going to delete the contents from within it. All right, let's delete this. And let's add a few more colors in here. So I don't know the hex codes, so I'm just going to add whatever. But make sure you add the correct name, otherwise it's not going to work. All right, and if we expand this, I mean, you already know what the app does, but... Let's just make sure that it doesn't disappear when we click the refresh button. Let's close it and open it again. And our contents are still here. Let's click delete. And that's how you create this application using local storage. All right, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you learned a little bit more than you did in the last video. I know I kept it really simple and you probably couldn't really apply what you learned in that video that much onto an actual application. But hopefully this one, you know, made things a little bit more clear for you. So I might be coming out with a part four. You never know. 
maybe if I want to make something a little bit more complex, but we'll see about that. All right. Thanks for watching.